this chapter, chapter three, is on biochemistry. Note, biochemistry, the chemistry of life. We also refer to biochemicals as organic compounds. These are compounds synthesized by cells and that contain carbon. Why carbon? All life is built on carbon. Cells, which made of 72% of water and 25% carbon compounds. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids are the four main macromolecules of life. Then we have about 3% salt and a few uh, minerals. When we look at carbon, which is the central atom of all biochemicals, remember from last chapter, we looked at the atomic model of carbon. We noticed that it had four electrons in its outermost shell. This is very unique, and this actually allows carbon to pair with many, many different atoms in, it, in its attempt to fill its outermost shell. Here are some examples of biochemicals of living things. Notice that the base or backbone of all of these structures is carbon. And attached to this carbon, we have many different atoms. The arrangement of these atoms will define which organic molecule we're talking about. So here's glucose, a carbohydrate, simple sugar, okay, and we'll discuss its compound, its uh, structure in just a moment. Notice it's just made of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, where this amino acid, which is the basic building block of proteins, has some different atoms in it, such as nitrogen. This is a basic uh, structure of a fat or a lipid. Notice it has a long hydrocarbon chain, and attached to it is something called a functional group, which we'll define in just a few moments. So what are functional groups? These are the things that are attached to that carbon skeleton. The most important thing about these uh, functional groups is this is the area that will participate in a chemical reaction. So it gives the organic molecule very distinctive properties. So we're going to look at these functional groups and we're going to look at how uh, what we mean by reactivity. So here are basic functional groups we're going to discuss in this unit which is hydroxyl. You may have heard of the ion in chemistry uh, 1, uh, OH, the hydroxide ion. Well, when it's, attached, it's, when it's attached to a long carbon chain, this, this area right here is called the hydroxyl functional group. So many different compounds have, um, organic compounds have this functional group, such as alcohols carbohydrates and aldehydes. When we look at these, these are polar, which means, remember, they can dissolve in water or they are hydrophilic. Another functional group is uh, the carbonyl group. These are ketones. Uh, these are polar and hydrophilic. The carboxyl group, which is part of our fatty acids, um, and they kind of act like an acid, we'll discuss that. And the amino group contains that nitrogen group or parts of amino acids. So here are the little structures, and when we look at it, uh, the carboxyl group, COOH, you notice it looks like this, it's contained in fatty acids and amino acids, the hydroxyl group, carbohydrates, amino group, amino acids are proteins, and then lastly, the phosphate group, which is part of our nucleic acids, our DNA, and our ATP. So when we look at the hydroxyl group, um, and we look at, for example, an alcohol, notice you can see right here, this is the hydroxyl group. This is the group that's going to participate in the chemical reaction. Here's the carbonyl group. We find these in things like propanol and acetone the ketones, which are uh, part of breakdowns of certain molecules in our body. 
the amino group. This is a, um, attached to, um, this is our amino acid, so this would be the amino functional group, which again will participate in the chemical reaction to build a protein. A phosphate group, PO4, okay, this is basically part of uh, many different organic molecules, but the ones, the biochemical molecules that will contain this are going to be DNA, um, RNA, and ATP. When we look at our uh, major biological molecules, the shape of that structure actually dictates the function. So when we look, for example, at this, this is going to be nucleic acid. Um, its function is to store information. Whereas the, this molecule right here, and this one right here, these two, um, notice they're very loosely bonded, and these are basically going to be our carbohydrates and our fats. Well, we have enzymes in our body that will be able to come along and break bonds. So these are our, our energy supplying biochemical molecules. So when we build this cell, we start with water as our solvent and then add some carbon containing molecules. These are our four major molecules of life. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. When we go through this chapter, we're going to take one a biochemical molecule at a time, define what does it mean to be a carbohydrate, what is its major function for living things, and etc, etc, etc. When we talk about these big macromolecules, these are huge assemblies of atoms, and they're actually formed by linking together a set of building blocks, simple structure or molecules called monomers. Mono meaning one. When we build this large macromolecule, another name for that is called a polymer. It's called a polymer because it's made of many monomers. So when we look at our large macromolecules, these are containing like three to millions of monomers linked together through chemical bonding. So when we look at a carbohydrate, sometimes we call it a polysaccharide. The reason why it's called poly, many. And a saccharide is basically the monomer of a carbohydrate. Triglycerides, we'll discuss in a moment. Components of fats or lipids. Polypeptides or proteins. This is the type of bond that links the amino acids together. So they're called polypeptides. And then nucleic acids, we will define uh, the basic components of those. So again, here are monomers, monosaccharides, glycerol fatty acids are components of our lipids, amino acids, the monomer of proteins, and nucleotides are monomers of nucleic acids such as DNA, ATP, and RNA. So for example, monomers. A monosaccharide is a monomer or a single unit of a macromolecule or polymer called a polysaccharide or carbohydrate. Each one of these polysaccharides contain one monomer that is linked many, many units. Okay, we'll define many different kinds of um, carbohydrates in just a moment. This would be example of uh, the polysaccharide starch, glycogen, and cellulose. They have very slightly different structures, but they are the same because they contain glucose that has been linked together okay, over and over. Here is our monomer of our proteins. So we have 20 different kinds of amino acids, and this would be depending on which ones linked together, would basically determine what protein our body makes. The last is our nucleic acids, our DNA and RNA. They contain repeating units of something called a nucleotide. Well, a nucleotide is actually made of three different things. It contains a phosphate group, a sugar, and what we call a nitrogenous base. So if you look, this right here is one nucleotide that's repeated over and over again. 
we have different bases, and we have um, different sugars in RNA and in DNA. So how are these large polymers formed? All polymers are formed when two monomers are joined by a hydroxyl group and hydrogen of the adjacent molecule. Water is removed in the process, therefore we call this a condensation reaction when the bond is made. So let's take a look at a official for one moment. So for example, we have one monomer here and another monomer here for simplicity purposes. Notice this is the hydroxyl group, this is the hydrogen group. Therefore, when these two monomers join together, they form a new molecule, okay? And in the process, this H and this H and this O are removed, which is water, and a new chemical bond is formed, and a new whole molecule is made. Enzymes are required for this to occur. We'll define enzymes in the next unit. Here is an example for you. Okay, so this is the formation of a polymer, maltose, like making malts. Okay, this is the sugar in malt. So maltose is actually disaccharide. It has two monomers that have been joined together to form this new molecule, this new disaccharide. So it's actually made of two glucoses that have been chemically bound together. And when this hydroxyl group and this hydrogen on the adjacent glucose come together, water is removed and this chemical bond is made. Now we have a new molecule, maltose. When large molecules are broken down, this is called hydrolysis. And it's just the opposite of condensation. So instead of water being removed, we have to add water. So what we're basically doing is adding back the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen group to each one of those individual units so they can split apart. And again, enzymes are necessary for this to be made. All right, our first large macromolecule are carbohydrates polysaccharides. The function of carbohydrates is for energy. So here is uh, our uh, models of our group simple sugars, our glucose, the molecule that we all need to make ATP energy. So if we look at the structure, we look here and we can write it C6H12O6. This is our ball and stick model and then this is our space field model. So here are some monosaccharides that we're going to be looking at. Monosaccharides, uh, we're going to look at as six carbon sugars and five carbon sugars. So the six carbon sugars that we're going to actually take a look at is glucose and fructose. Both of these have the same molecular formula, C6H12O6. They have just slightly different arrangements of those of those atoms, therefore they actually are called isomers. So we'll take a look at this in your textbook uh, one day and we'll have you uh, actually draw out those two uh, isomers of one another. Ribose and deoxyribose contain five sugars and they are contained in DNA and RNA. So we'll actually look at these and draw these out in our lesson. Disaccharides, known as di means two, is made of two monosaccharides that have been joined together by a condensation reaction. Depending what monomer comes together depends on what disaccharide is made. For example, lactose. Lactose is a sugar in milk, so it is made of lactose plus glucose that have been chemically bonded together through condensation. Maltose, glucose plus glucose, joined together by condensation. Okay, polysaccharides are made of many thousands of monomers that have been joined together. These 
are all isomers of one another because actually they contain the same monomer. They just have different arrangements of the molecules in their big structure. So they actually all contain thousands of glucoses that have been bonded together. Starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. So let's take a look at a visual here. You notice this is a starch. You find it in potatoes. And if you look at its structure, notice it is a coiled structure. Um, and so basically, since it's coiled and opened, enzymes can easily come along and break each one of these chemical bonds and release that glucose that we can use for energy. Another carbohydrate, glycogen, it's very similar except this time instead of just being coiled, it has branches off. So basically this is what we store in our liver for a source of glucose. Cellulose is another carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate. Notice it has a straight chain structure. And due to this structure, this straight chains of glucose, it is very strong and very supported. So it's what we call a structural carbohydrate located in the cell wall of these plant cells. Chitin is similar, except that it has an additional group on it. But again, notice it is straight chains of glucose. So again, this is another what we call structural carbohydrate. And it's found, this chitin is found in the exoskeletons of insects. So carbohydrates function. It's for energy. So we know that glucose is necessary for cellular respiration for us to make ATP, our energy molecule. So in our body, we can take these large macromolecules in, use enzymes, split those bonds, and release these little simple glucose molecules that can actually enter our cell. We can do the same thing with glycogen. When our supplies of glucose is low in our body, we can actually uh, release that glycogen from our liver into our bloodstream and again enzymes can come along snip those bonds and we can use these simple units to make energy in the form of ATP. Here again are our structural carbohydrates necessary for supporting those plants and those insects. So again cellulose, cell walls of plants gives it support, chitin exoskeletons and insects give it gives this these insects support